Hey everyone, my name is Steven Sharif, and I'm the creative director here at Intrepid Studios. Many of you have seen our MMORPG in development, Ashes of Creation. Well, I'd like to take you through part one in a series of videos that will explain probably the most important system in the game, our node system. This system is what enables players to develop the world around them, affecting everything from the story of the world to the content that players experience. All throughout the world in Ashes of Creation exist nodes. These nodes at first exist behind the scenes, unknown to the players as collection points for activities. These nodes are divided into zones of influence, or ZOIs as we call them, represented here by the different colored areas, and within each zone is a node as shown. A node represents a specific location where a camp can form and gradually be developed into a village, then a town, to a city, and eventually a metropolis. Every activity a player participates in will fall within a specific node's ZOI, and these activities will contribute to that specific node's development. This is important because only so many nodes can be developed, and certain content is locked behind which nodes develop. This can create conflict between different communities that have a vested interest in the development of certain nodes. When you first enter the world, you will arrive through one of the great divine gateways. These portals are remnants of the civilizations that once inhabited this world. Your ancestors fled their home in haste, and now an eternity has passed, and these divine gateways have opened once again, leading you back to the world of your origin. As our players begin to explore their surroundings, they will find a world teeming with valuable resources, complex quests, and monstrous foes. In this case, one of our players has found some ore to mine, which allows her to progress her artisan class by collecting materials from the world. This other player has begun to harvest wood he needs for building supplies to construct a home on the hillside. As they collect these materials, they are both gaining character experience while at the same time contributing experience to the node that resides within this specific zone of influence. As players participate in more activities, this node will collect enough experience to advance to the next stage of development. All the activity in this area has brought the base node to stage one in its development. We call this the NPC stage. Until now, this node was unknown but the arrival of these NPCs unlocks access to new activities for the players, and as the node continues to progress through each level, it will attract more NPCs, which will provide evolving content, content that reflects the specific node's location. Let's fast forward to a level four node, the town stage. Notice that a new monster is threatening our newly formed town. If this node had not been developed, it may have never revealed itself. The world itself is reacting to the advancement of specific nodes. This town was advanced near forests and mountains, drawing the attention of the sinister creatures that dwell within. If the town had been formed along the coast, perhaps this fisherman would have caught something more dangerous than the fish you see here. The content that exists in ashes connects in some way to the location and advancement of the node system. It reaches level 5, becoming a city, and some new events are happening in the world. A bridge has been built to connect this area to a neighboring node. This will add a potential trade route that our caravan system will take advantage of, connecting two neighboring nodes and allowing for economic prosperity for players to capitalize on. However, all of this activity has triggered something deep within the mountain. All of this civilization has awoken an ancient dragon. The higher stage a node advances, the more significant events it draws toward it. Epic world bosses will reflect the development of specific nodes in their location. Our world is designed to react to the players by providing new and exciting chapters to an ever-evolving story. A story that reflects the actions of each server. A story that can change and adapt to provide the players an immersive tale woven by the actions of the community. This dragon is the server's dragon part of the server's tale, and one which might not be seen on any other server. The players now must react to this evolving threat. Thankfully, these players are up to the task, and taking down this dragon has again contributed to the node, furthering its development. From the first stage of a few wandering merchants to the sixth stage of a sprawling metropolis, nodes redefine the world around them, influencing points of interest in the world, quest lines, story arcs, drop tables and resource pools, even the spawn tables for bosses and NPCs across the world. This cycle of nodes leveling, triggering events, and leveling again is the fundamental cycle of growth throughout Ashes of Creation. 
The world you see reflected on your server will depend entirely on where players decide to plant their roots. And the events and structures that fill the world will be a direct result of where and when nodes evolve. Even we aren't sure where players will take things, which makes this project exceptionally exciting for all of us. We focused here on the growth of nodes in order to show how the base functionality works, but in upcoming videos we'll delve into the sieging and possible destruction of nodes, how player-run governments of nodes work, and how regions grow. I hope you've enjoyed part one. And if you'd like to get involved in our development, you can register on our website at ashesofcreation.com or follow us on YouTube and join our community discord. Thanks for watching part one in our series on nodes.